Hi, this is Mike Gressel, CEO of Cloud9 Software. On today's episode of the podcast, you're going to learn a bit about how software for the orthodontic practice industry is really all about optimizing your practice for maximum success. Orthomarketing.com, 360 degree digital marketing solutions for your practice. Well, hello, everybody in podcast land. This is Dean Steinman, president of Wealth of Marketing, and we are back with another podcast for you. It is early 2022. It's, it's cold here in New York, and hopefully where you are in the world, you're nice and warm and you're staying safe. It's a crazy time. We're back in again. Um, but with these crazy times, we have some great information, and I'm very excited to have today um, a very exciting software company join us to, to talk about um, trends in practice management, um, talking about technology and ways to make your practice a lot more efficient and effective. So I have with me um, Mike Russell, who is the CEO of Cloud9 Software and Phyllis Hernandez, who is, is the Senior Director of Customer Success. And I uh, wanted to welcome them and enjoy joining our podcast. So how are you doing today, guys? Hi, doing Dean. great. Thank you. Great, great. So, um, why don't you, you know, we're going to, you know, defer to you, Mike. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Cloud9, you know, who you guys are and what you do? So, uh, Dean, first of all, I want to say thank you for having us on today. Really appreciate it. Um, Cloud9 software is uh, basically a cloud based practice management solution uh, that focuses on delivering uh, practice management for orthodontic and pediatric dental practices. Uh, just that simple. Um, we uh, have been in business for about 12 years now. And um, uh, as we discussed a few moments ago, you know, we're, we're headquartered here in Atlanta, Georgia, but uh, really now have uh, an increasingly remote workforce, which really matches the nature of, of our solution, which is entirely cloud based. So interesting. So um, when I work with 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 a, a practice and we work with all different practices, we work with orthodontists and Pedo, as well as, as different other dental practices. And obviously, some, there are several different players in the, in the industry. And when we talk to them, we always try to find out who their software is and what bells and whistles they have. And it's funny, when I talk to them, they have no clue what is even available to them in their, in their software. They barely scratch the surface of the capabilities of, of what they have. And at the end of the day, you guys are the engine that drives, that drives their car. Um, so realistically, what goes into a practice management software um, that makes it complete. So what are the main components that uh, somebody who has a practice now um, should be make sure they have in, the, in their software and or if they're looking to change or just not happy. So what are the main components or what are the main uh, parts of the recipe for the, the ideal you know, practice management software? Phyllis, do you want to maybe take that one? Just, uh, sure, maybe? absolutely. So it's instrumental for a practice in order to run efficiently and effectively to have several different components in their practice management software. They're looking for a scheduling component so they can manage their appointments. They're looking for uh, an electronic records. So to chart their diagnostic information, their treatment recommendations and records. They're looking for an imaging product so they can capture x-rays and photographs that take the patient on the journey from their start to finish. A strong financial package where they can manage their um, revenue cycle. So for payments, charges, auto payments, you know, captures, um, they're looking for a strong, robust communication program. So they have the capabilities of communicating um, with not only their patients, but also their referring professionals. Obviously, times change, technologies change. Um, and now the fact that, you know, your guys are completely cloud-based, what's the difference between a cloud-based software program and a, I guess, PC or, or computer-based program? Those are, those, those are the two options, right? Yeah, you know, you know, effectively, um, uh, you know, cloud-based 
essentially puts everything on the internet, right? In the cloud, right? It's accessible through any device that has an internet connection and a, and a browser, right? You know, it, what you do is you really um, uh, re remove the limitation in terms of accessibility to the data uh, and the platform that you happen to be on doesn't really matter. Um, and, and, you know, from a security and a stability standpoint, um, it really, you know, ensures that that your application is available, your data is available when and where you need it, right? In contrast, uh, if you have the more traditional or, or legacy um, on-premise software kind of model, you're exactly right, Dean. You basically have a, have a box of PC, typically, uh, maybe a Mac, uh, you know, sitting in the corner or under a desk in your office and all of your records, all of your software, all of your patient information is stored on that box physically in your office. Um, you know, and along with that come the attendant requirements of maintaining that box, making sure the software is up to date, making sure the operating system is up to date, making sure that the box is physically protected, that somebody doesn't actually, you know, accidentally kick it, you know, and unplug it or, or you know, God forbid there's some natural disaster, which you know, is not unknown to happen, right? But, you know, if, if there's a, you know, forget, you know, a, a freak rainstorm or snowstorm, but even if there's a burst pipe, right? You know, I mean, these things happen. And uh, so, so you know, the physical security of that box is also uh, a, a particular note, which when you move to the cloud, you know, all of that, that, you know, administrative overhead, all of that risk really, you know, frankly fades into the background, right? Because, you know, by way of example, here at Cloud9, we operate on the AWS platform, right, which is a world-class data center, um, you know, and availability is, um, you know, is, is, is consistent and it's secure. Uh, and, uh, you know, in terms of accessibility, as I said, as long as you have a device with a browser and an Internet connection, you can get to your data. You know, so um, typically, you know, the practices that we work with are generally, generally from, you know, one to four or five locations. Um, and so there are a lot of chefs in the kitchen when it comes to that. So who are the most, most of the time, the people that are, need to access the, the program? Um, Cause I know that, you know, there are a lot of different moving parts when it comes to, you know, orthodontic practice, you know, when they've got their scanners and they've got, you know, everything with, they got their iTero and they've got their, um, you know, everything with Invisalign and et cetera. So there's always different data coming back and pictures coming in and out, um, you know, and there's a lot of moving, moving parts. So um, who are the main users of your software or, a, or any practice management software? And what kind of, do they have to have any special skill set um, to do it? Because, you know, I'm sure if somebody's looking at, you know, buying a software program, they might get freaked out because they think it's a little technologically oriented, they don't, you know, when they're not up to it or their staff's a little bit older, you know, and they don't get that there. So, um, you know, typically who is the main user of a, of a, of a main software platform? I'll, I'll defer to, to Phyllis on this one. <laughs> so our customer base, our experience is, is that every employee within their practice touches the software or logs into the software on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So as far as the skill set, we range anywhere from young adults to you know, more advanced adults in utilization of the software. I'll be politically correct here. Right. Um, but what's great about our software is it's very intuitive and our users do not have an issue with either learning or navigating through the different components of the software. So you will see each and every individual person within a dental organization touch the software daily. Yeah, because there are a lot of several different, you know, components of a successful practice from the office manager to billing to the TC to, you know, the, um, to scheduling to the doctor um, to communication, et, et cetera. And there are a lot of pieces on, on there. Um, so one thing I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk about a little bit is um, virtual orthodontics, teledentistry, um, you know, in, in my world, things have changed a lot, you know, uh, prior to, you know, to, you know, early 2021, 
there was this thing as virtual consults. There was this thing as virtual follow-ups, you know. Um, and now, if a practice does not have orthodontic on demand and have appointments scheduled on the consumer's time, not your time, you're out of luck. You know, um, an interesting um, article I read is the average um, person uh, he wants to hear from a practice within 10 minutes. They don't hear from a practice in 10 minutes. The, the chances of them signing up or coming in for a consult drops 500% within wow. 10 minutes. Okay. Um, then scheduling it, you know, so think about it. if you go, if you go to Instacart, you don't want to call or email them and say, Hey, do you have bananas? What do you have Cheerios? You want to just add it to the cart and do it. So, you know, we're in a world now with instant gratification and, and instant scheduling, instant follow-ups. And I know there was this, it's, it's been a big issue across the board from my standpoint when it comes to scheduling, because a lot of practice you know, software is you can't write to it. You can push it out, but I can't put stuff onto it there. So um, how do you guys handling, you know, um, virtual scheduling and consults? Cause you know, let me back up a little bit again. From a marketing perspective, the person doesn't cross the line of becoming a patient and getting into the software until they actually go through a consult and, and give the information in. From, from there, it's a whole different ball game. But, they, but, but there's still some kind of overlap between the two. All right, so how um, have you guys adapted your technology or how do you see you know, um, adapt, adaptation being, being done when it comes to virtuals? Because obviously it's so big and everything is automated. So how are you guys, um, how do you see that be, being implemented now through your software or any software program? I'll take that one too, Mike. Yep. <laughs> um, you're absolutely correct. Um, the new trends in teledentistry is to support a virtual environment. And it's from the very beginning of being able to schedule online for a new patient. So to fill out your health history, your new patient intake forms, everyone wants to be able to do that in a virtual environment, schedule your appointments virtually, and then have your communication between the office and the consumer to be virtual. So the software needs to support that environment, but then taking it to the next level, the trend we're seeing also in the industry is to conduct appointments, whether it be checkup appointments virtually. So there are some softwares that are assisting with being able to upload. The patients take pictures of their mouth, upload it to exactly. their provider, mm -hmm. and they're able to check the progress of their treatment virtually mm -hmm. so they can minimize the actual in-office visits. They can um, conduct um, consultations virtually with parents so they can discuss treatment progress with parents. And they can also do financial presentations when it comes to initiating a, treat a new treatment plan mm -hmm. with a mother, a father, or a guardian that is in a remote location so they can conduct this all virtually. So these are typically the trends we're seeing and our, the software needs to be able to support that virtual environment. It does. The practices that I work with that are doing the best have adapted, you know, and um, I feel so by a podcast previously, but I, I use this line all the time. If you watch, if you ever saw the, the movie or read the book Moneyball, um, you know, adapt or die. You know, and I, drive, and, I, and I say that probably four or five, six times a day, you know, in conversations because you have to. Um, if you are not adapting to the tr trends, the times, and the pulse, somebody else will, and they're going to pass right by you. Um, you know, for all of my clients, 100% of them, the Internet is the number one source of new patients, every one of them. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, that's a positive and a negative because there are other, other options out there. So as I said before, if somebody goes to a, a orthodontist website, they can't schedule a consult there. They're going to leave a message or whatever. They're going to probably call somebody else and be able to find one that you can book it on. And they want to be able to book it ASAP. If you book something two weeks from now, they might go to another person who will let you book it tomorrow or do a virtual one. And the appointment that they schedule for two weeks from now, they're not going to show up. You know, so you get a lot of no-shows that way. 
Um, so there are a lot of moving parts the, the, these days here. And there, fortunately and unfortunately, there's no bundle that has it. Everybody's got, you know, I've got clients that have six, eight, ten different SaaS platforms. Yeah. You know, one for their follow-ups, one for their for their um, you know reminders, one for their text program, yeah. um, one you know for um, insurance for vacation, another for scheduling, another for this or that, um, and you know, and it's hard to adapt you know to yeah. technologies because you can't be great at everything. You know, yeah. so um, from your standpoint, what is probably the the top two most important things in a practice management software that will be the core of it? Because I said there's a lot of other moving parts, and sure you can offer some of these things, but to be great at everything is impossible. Right. So, you know, what would you say are, are the two most important aspects of a of a of a software program? Yeah. So so I'll I'll, I'll offer one. Um, you know, aside from the, 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 the core outline that uh, Phyllis took us through just a few moments ago, um, I would put patient engagement um, at the top of my list, right? That, that whether that's texting, two-way texting reminders, um, you know, ba basically having um, a, a more seamless and integrated way to connect with your patients on an ongoing basis, right? So to me, that that is critical and, and, and you know, certainly something that as I look at the industry in general, to your point, Dean, that, you know, there's there's been this history of, of sort of a smattering of different providers being very niche in what they do, right? And and ultimately, you know, we're getting to a point where this has to start to come together and be more unified, more consolidated, um, uh, more integrated than it than it has been historically, right? To your point, you know, if, I, if I'm if I'm a, if I'm a doctor, I'm operating a practice. The last thing I want to have is twelve different vendors for each little individual thing. So we get that, we totally understand it. And uh, uh, it certainly drives a lot of our thinking as we look forward you know, uh, into the future for, for Cloud9. Uh, but I would put patient engagement at the top of my list. Phyllis, what would you add as, uh, as yours? The feedback that we get from our customers is number one, what Mike just outlined. And the number two would be the um, online scheduling, the ease of new patient intake forms and online interaction, whether it be through the practices website or through the actual software itself that takes that information, puts it directly into the software and makes it not only efficient for the patient interface, but also for the efficiency on the staff side because then it reduces their manual effort to record that information, get the appointment or the information scheduled. So I would say online scheduling and intake forms. Yeah, and, and if I may, just to, to expand on that, just a touch, I, I would argue that it, it's that it's that nurturing, right? It's that lead nurturing, the lead capture, and then ultimately converting those into new patient starts. As, as quickly and efficiently yeah. as possible, right? That, that that whole upfront process is absolutely critical. Um, it is, and I was about to say that that um, another statistic is the average person needs to be reached eight times before the, before they come in, and you have to again adapt. So if somebody contacts your your office and they fill, it's, it's so funny. The, in my eyes, the biggest hole in every practice as a staff, okay? Because they just have a lot of things going on. That's why automation and, and, and technology is, is so important. You know, so it's funny when somebody, a lot of times somebody will will fill out a form on the, you know, an intake form on the, for the, on the website. And then the, the office manager or whoever it is will leave a message and say it's a bad lead. Well, no, because the person, if they wanted to be called, they pick up the phone and call you. So they don't want to be called. They filled out a form. So, you know, how is a, a software programs adapting to the way that people want to be communicated with? Because some people want to pick up the phone and call. Some people want to be texted. Some people want to be emailed. Um, some people want to be want to be direct message. Some people want to use bot. You know, there's a lot of different, there's, you know, five, six different ways that people can communicate now. Um, so how do you, um, you know, put all that together? Um, is you know in, in the software program, or do you just focus on one or two of those, or do you do you see it all coming together step down the road? Um, you know, I, to, to your point, Dean, I, I think it is um, 
not not just challenging, but I think it's a little foolhardy to suggest that that you can do all of it at at a great at a great level, right? Thank so you. I think it's important to 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 select and prioritize okay. based on on what we're seeing. And what I would tell you is that uh, what we're hearing is that that the text is really the primary channel for communication these days, right? You know, so um, you know certainly there's there there's there's what I'll call sort of traditional telephony, you know, just a normal phone call, email, you know, people of my generation, you know, I'll speak for myself, but I tend to be more of an email guy still than, than, than text. You know, I don't know that I want to get, you know, text with, you know, 30, 30 rows of, of uh, information in it. But uh, uh, what we're hearing really from, from our customers and from the market in general is text is first and foremost and being able to do that in an interactive way that is integrated into the software. Right. So th th this is the other part, right. You know, to your, uh, statement earlier, um, it's not enough just to enable the texting, right? It, it has to be enabled in a way that's smart, in a way that's integrated, so that um, you know when when a when a um, you know when a, a member of the staff at a practice pulls up a particular patient's record, you know they can see a full history of the communication, regardless of what channel that communication occurred through. You know, it's not enough to just have some separate application where you just you know, you, you off offline, you know, sort of run your communications there and you either have to maintain separate disparate systems or you have to have some clumsy way of copying and pasting that all into into the patient's record. You know, to, to me, th those days are, are, are quickly fading away. We, we're, we're getting to a point where all of that has to be integrated and delivered in a unified platform. And if you had to pick on a scale of one to ten, one being, you know, obviously low, to them being completely automated, how automated is the communication and um, and onboarding process from a lead generation standpoint through through softwares? Because the more that the staff has to get involved, the less chance of, of, of it happening. Because I said there's many steps involved to try to reach out to them over and over again. And somebody that might not have to go in and, and send a text. And when did they send an email? When did they send the phone call? So how automated is um, this, this software platform? Or, and how automated do you see it going down down the road? Because in my eyes, ideally, I've got clients that she, you know, I spoke to one today. She goes, I wish I had no staff. Okay, I wish every I want people, patients to walk in, to check in, to be able to do this, and it's, and everything is automated. All she does is see them and be done. You know, in an ideal world, that may, you know, for her, that's perfect. People still want old, you know, old school touching and whatever. But um, there's a lot of moving parts. So, um, how automated would you say cloud nine is from one to ten? And then let's talk about the future. Where do you? How far do you see it going? So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll offer my judgment here. And again, I welcome Phyllis's input. I would probably put us from a pure, you know, end-to-end -end automation standpoint, as you're describing, um, I would probably put us middle of the road, you know, in terms of, of you know, industry average. I, I, don't, I don't think that, that we're, we're spectacular at it, but I also don't think that we're, we're terrible at it, you know. But, but I, what I do know is that um, it's an important point of investment for us, and it's an area that I know that we are uh, intent on improving. And in terms of where I think we can go, I, you know, I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be so bold as to say we're you know we're going to hit hit one hundred percent and make it a ten. Right. But I th I think you know a, a nine is certainly attainable. Uh, you know, um, I agree. I, I think it should be somewhere in the eight 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 to eight and a half range. Yeah. There still has to be some sort of human element in there, but as but as much as possible. Yeah. Um, is would, would, would be ideal. Um, what has been the biggest hurdle that you guys have um, faced and overcome in the last couple of years in your soft in your software journey? Um, you know, obviously, I'm sure you must be in you know version 46 compared to where you were when you first start when the company first started, or even further than that. I don't even know how you know how, how many versions you are. But you know, since you've been there, like you know, what has been the biggest hurdle that you have saw and then overcome. So, you know, it, it's interesting. I, I, I uh, just this December, I celebrated two years with the company. So I, I'm, a, I'm a relative babe in the woods when it comes to cloud nine. Uh, but, um, you know, in, in, in my brief tenure here, uh, what I can tell you is our biggest challenge has really been around um, 
making sure that we're continuing to scale our infrastructure to accommodate the growth that we've that we've experienced right so you know cloud nine has been been you know exceedingly fortunate in in terms of of you know our our growth and expansion into the industry uh, and you know we were originally founded and launched in what i would call a, a co-located data center where we had you know our own boxes our own infrastructure and we were simply in a secure location <clears throat> and the reality is is that um i think for a period of time our growth outstripped the capacity that we had just literally in terms of the boxes and so over the last year and a half uh our team has been working their hearts out to really you know re revamp the what i'll call the underlying architecture of the application and then as part of that ultimately migrating all of our users over to, as I mentioned earlier, AWS, right? So we're on Amazon Web Services now. Um, and, you know, we're, we're at a point where between those migrations and and the investments we've made in the architecture, uh, you know, the, 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 the issues of scaling, the issues of, of, you know, what I'll call infrastructure stability, you know, I won't, again, I won't go so far as to say that, that you know, there's zero risk and anybody who says that would be foolish, but uh, um, I think we have those concerns well in hand and well behind us. And, and frankly, at this point, we're focused on continuing to build and expand on that platform, uh, you know, as we, we continue our efforts in terms of getting further into the market, so. Yeah, and if I could add to Mike's comments there, all of that infrastructure remodeling and efforts that we're putting forth is helping us and our customers that we have seen a trend recently in the market for, we call them OSOs, orthodontic service organizations. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing more organizations that require the ability for scalability because they have multiple locations. And when we say multiple locations, we mean hundreds of locations within their infrastructure. And I think that technical application that Mike alluded to is really helping those customers to be for us to support them and to be part of their ability to grow their own organizations because our software can grow with them. Focus on that. Um, I'm going to ask you guys to put on your um, glasses to be able to look in the future. Okay. So let's go, let's forward to 2024. Okay. What's going to be different in softwares for practice management softwares that is not the here right now is um you know uh against the wall you know something completely you know obviously who knows but where do you see this going so i i i will tell you that that um over the next two years i think we're going to see further further consolidation and, and when, when i say that what i mean is again <clears throat> today we have this um almost constellation of of niche players that are out there that that fulfill different you know elements of of value for for practices and i think you know as as our platform continues to evolve as our competitors continue to evolve i think we're going to see an increasing trend of the most important elements that need to be part of the core platform will become part of the core platform and so, I, I, you know, what I envision, Dean, is a world where um, life for our customers, life for our practices gets easier and more efficient because they have, you know, as you put it, you know, sort of the, the, the foundational element, right? The platform, right? We're, we're the operating platform for the practice. They have operating platform in place that really addresses all of their most critical needs without having to deal with the added complication of managing multiple vendors and multiple interfaces and everything else, right? That the whole point of software is to try to simplify our lives, right? To decomplicate our lives and make us more efficient and more productive. And, and to me that in order to get to that objective, that's, that's where we've got to go. That's where we've got to head. Right. Um, all right. So I'm going to ask you guys two more questions. 
Um, if you had a redo button, what's one thing that you would change, okay, in the industry as far as the software goes? Hmm. Something to change in the industry. Phyllis, you, you want to answer that one? That's a tricky question. I'm sitting here chewing on it going, hmm, what would I change? You know, we're very fortunate to work in an industry that is re very rewarding. Yeah. Um, it's rewarding because of the services that our customers provide mm -hmm. and the impact that they have on changing the lives of people because when they change their smile, it changes their confidence, their self-esteem. So I have to honestly say, I feel very blessed and I don't have any regrets or anything that I would change really with, you know, and I hate to say this, but my 40 years in the industry, it's been extremely rewarding and being able to provide it from a software standpoint to help them deliver that service um, has been a reward for me. So I don't have a regret. That's ter terrific. Uh, you know, I always like to tell people I'm in the smile business. All right. My job is to make my clients smile and their job is to make other people smile. And, you know, you're, you're right. When people, um, especially orthodontics, when they get their... Um, teeth straight and it changes their lives. You know, if you walk down, you know, walk down downtown Atlanta and you look yeah. at somebody and they're walking like this and not, you know, and head down or whatever it is, you, you don't feel positive about that person. But if somebody's just smiling and looking, you know, just happy, you know, it's because they're more confident in themselves. Um, and, you know, people who get, you know, who look better, feel better, they get the job they want, they get, you know, the promotion they want, they get the girl they want, the guy they want, they get whatever it is because they feel better about themselves, you know? So and it's, a, it's, it's, it's a game changer, you know? Yeah. Um, so um, one question now for you, Mike, if you have the ability to put a billboard up in Times Square tomorrow, what's it going to say? Does not have to be anything about it could be about business it could be anything anything but what's the your build what are you gonna what 10 million people are get, gonna see tomorrow from from the minds of mike uh don't say go dogs no <laughs> <laughs> no, no i won't say that no I, I actually you know truthfully uh it would probably be something along the lines of uh uh get vaccinated and stay safe honestly okay. because okay. Uh, you know i i uh if there's one thing that keeps me up at night, just generally, not, not specific to to orthodontics or to software, is just you know the the the, the fortunes of our nation and the world, and uh, you know um, getting getting all of us, you know, through this pandemic, uh, you know, as as safely and as quickly as we can. Um, you know, it, it's had a profound effect on the globe, and uh, you know, I, 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 every time we think. Um, we're, we're through it. Apparently we're not right. So it's like, if we could all get on the same page and, and, and make a unified effort, um, I think we'd all be in a lot better place. Well said. And, um, Phyllis, last question for you. Um, and the most important question, Hershey bar or Reese's <laughs> peanut butter cup. Ooh, does that Hershey bar have almonds? You tell me. I could not get that question. <laughs> Reese's. Yes. Well said. Yes. Well, <laughs> well done. Perfect. All right. Well, um, Michael, thanks so much for, for joining us. We really appreciate it. So if um, somebody is interested in learning more information, um, wants to do a demo, um, just to pick your brain, what's the best way for somebody to get in touch with, with you guys over at Cloud9? I would say just go to our website, cloud9.software. Okay. And that's, is that the number nine or, spell, or the word or both? Uh, the number nine. Cloud nine, that's software. You got it. Great. Well, thank you so much for, for joining. I appreciate it. Um, everybody out there, again, be safe. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out. Um, we'd love to hear feedback, and we'd love to hear what um, questions you might have when it comes to, to software. So, everybody, thanks so much. Be happy. Be safe. Keep smiling. Bye-bye. Thank you. orthomarketing.com 360 degree digital marketing solutions for your practice